Dave Lazat here for episode five of Stripers Distant Replay. It's the video series where we invite members of last year's International League South Division Championship Club to watch key moments from memorable 2019 games. Today, I am joined by Atlanta Braves number three prospect Ian Anderson, number 10 prospect Tucker Davidson, and Stripers pitching coach Mike Murat. Anderson went eight and seven with a 3.38 ERA and 26 starts between Mississippi and Gwinnett in 2019, earning the Braves Minor League Pitcher of the Year award. Davidson went eight and seven with a 2.15 ERA and 25 starts with Mississippi and Gwinnett in 2019, and was named a Southern League postseason All-Star. We'll watch each pitcher earn their first AAA win with the Stripers. This is Stripers Distant Replay, Episode 5, Part 1. We've got Ian Anderson, Tucker Davidson, and Mike Marath joining us. Uh, we're going to watch August 11, 2019 at Scranton Wilkes-Barre. This is Ian Anderson's first AAA win. And as we get things set up here, uh, just talking about the season you've had so far to this point with Mississippi, 7-5 and five there with a 2 6 eight ERA, uh, 202 opponent average, and 21 starts. Uh, you're coming off starting the Futures game for the National League on July 7th. You've made one start in AAA so far, a uh, loss at Rochester. So this is your second AAA outing. What's your confidence level like entering uh, this game with the Strikers? Um, I mean, after the way my first one went, it wasn't too high. But, um, no, nah, you, you try not to let that affect you too much. But um, I was confident in what I'd done throughout the whole season. And, um knew that I that I could pitch at this level and so I, I had a good bit of confidence coming in just tried to throw a few more strikes in this game than I did in my first one. <laughs> is this the day game? Yeah this is the day game. My, my family was actually this is the first game they were actually able to see uh, of that season because uh, Mississippi was a, a good trek away but so they drove up I think about three hours to get to uh, Scranton so thankfully I put out a pretty good performance. A well, good start to the, the outing ball. for you. Yeah, curveball for uh, strikeout number one. That's Clint Frazier. Good way to start the game. <laughs> Absolutely. Four <laughs> strikes. Getting ahead early, love it. Yeah, I'm working down too. Love seeing that. Getting ahead. Oh, that was one thing that you did really good in this game, Ian, is, is getting ahead of hitters and control mm -hmm. of advance and counts. You know, yeah, I think there was a. Game. I think there was a stretch, maybe in like the fourth or fifth, where I started falling behind guys, and it was definitely more of an uphill battle. Where when I was getting ahead. I and mean, I was able to do a, a, a lot more with with the curveball and change up or elevating. You really wanted the strike out there, though. I was just going <laughs> to so I would love to get that down like a little bit more and probably get a strike out. That ball wasn't carrying it right today, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I know because the kid, I remember a guy hits a, I think it was either McBroom or someone gets me pretty good and I thought it was gone for sure to hit the wall, I think. I think the wind was helping oh, me out a little that. bit. Yeah. It was like the hardest hit ball change up there, I think. And so then at this point, this is where you start to kind of face the early adversity. I think you were talking yeah, about Ryan right McGroom. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is it right here. So. <laughs> Good pitch, a little off. I've always kind of had my struggles early on in games, I feel like. That's kind of been throughout my career so far, I would say. I see a little trend there, but. 
you always said if you get past the third, then you cruise. <laughs> yeah, <in>. exactly. <laughs> Seems like it. What do you think the reason for that is? Why you might struggle early and sort of get settled in after? I don't know. I mean, it. I really don't know. I mean, I'm messing around with my warm up a little bit, trying to see if that has anything to do with it. Uh, I think it, it, it could have something to do with, you know, as the game goes on, I'm able to mix my offerings better, um, kind of give give different looks. Um, but I mean, yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm not too sure. Well, we, we've talked today about the importance of, of Tucker's curveball. What's sort of the pitch for you that you know, you know, in the bullpen that you've got it that day, that's going to be a good day? Um, yeah, I'd probably say my curveball as well. Just that's uh, a pitch that I've been working on quite a bit. Um, yeah, see, he thinks he got that. So did I. I think. Oh, yeah. Pache almost had it too. Mm-hmm. Pache normally catches that ball. Yeah. Much yeah, I think side. he was still struggling with the the way the new baseball is kind of how their flight path is a little different. So Ryan McBroom with the RBI double, he ends up hitting 315 with 26 home runs for the season and um, makes the International League postseason all-star team. So if you're going to give up a, a long double to a guy, not surprising it was him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was, he was a very good player. He could hit. I think he's with the Royals now, maybe. I don't think he's with the Yankees anymore. Yeah, I, think you, I believe you're right. So this is, like we said, this is your second AAA start. It's your fourth season since the Braves selected you in the first round in 2016. What was it like for you reaching AAA that quickly? Did you expect going into 2019 that you would finish the year in AAA? And then what were your thoughts when you got that call up at the beginning of August? Yeah, I mean, kind of like Tucker, you know, obviously you have high aspirations for yourself. And um, it was nice to be, be rewarded by getting to AAA, yeah. Uh, at the end of last season and um it's been a pretty steady steady going process uh since i got drafted in 2016 so uh, i've just been taking it day by day and season by season and um, i'm happy with the way things things are uh, trending so far mm -hmm. Bad one right now. I know. See, even here, like I throw that good curveball to uh, Frazier, then I feel like I just got away from him. Watching it back now, which now, I mean, throughout the off season, that was something I put a big emphasis on. So, and in spring training, I was throwing it quite a bit, and uh, it was working pretty well. So. Yeah, both of you guys had really good spring training numbers before the shutdown happened. Uh, how tough was that to to be going along so well and then sort of have things abruptly end for you? Yeah, it's definitely tough. I mean, obviously, it's out of our control, but um, I mean, that last outing against the Orioles, me and Tuck both pitched pretty well and I think, you know, proved mm -hmm. ourselves a little bit. So uh, that's always exciting. But like I said, you only can control so much and uh, we'll just make the most of whatever happens next for us. Yeah, I remember that yeah. out in spring training, for sure. You guys both threw the ball really well. Yeah, I wish I was about 80 innings into the season right now. <laughs> uh, but it was it was a fun time, though, when spring training, like, was getting to, we were starting to roll, we were starting to get into minor league games, throwing three, four innings starting to get stretched out for the season. So I was looking forward to that. And then we kind of got shut down. So it's been interesting, but it's going to be really interesting what's about to happen in the next few months.
Mm-hmm. Or about now the bullpen's getting hot. <laughs> that I'm thinking not again to myself. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's key. You bring up a, a good point there, Ian. This, you know, this this is your second start in AAA. Your first start didn't go as well as you, you wanted to. You struggled a little Here's bit. It's a curveball. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, you get, you get first thing in your second outing after struggling in your first outing, you get two quick outs, and all of a sudden you run into this jam in the first inning. You know, just trying to get just get some momentum for yourself uh, as quick as you can. So to be able to work through this inning, um, you know, it's, it's crucial. And obviously you get on a roll after this, yeah. uh, you know, so just getting through that inning, you know, finding a way was, was key. Absolutely. Limiting the damage too. Mm-hmm. The damage I created myself, you know. Well, we'll watch you get uh, on a roll here, kind of like Mike said. This is bottom of the second. You've got a one nothing deficit, uh, but hopefully putting the, the first inning behind you at this point. This is uh, Francisco Arcia leading off against you. Yes, he did. Yep, yep, he knew he that's did. Something, yeah, that's something else I've been working on, just elevating. That's a big pitch for you, too. Being able to have that fastball up helps your curveball out a lot. Absolutely. Yep, and I mean, 18, you think back to, to the second half of the year of 18, we're working on that curveball a lot. And then I know uh, in, in his trucks, starting to work on the, the fastball up, the elevated fastball with the curveball. And yep. um, just like you're saying, and, and I mean, the, the curveball is has gotten so much better since that point that – now all of a sudden you add that to the, your, your good change up and elevating the fastball gives you so many options. Ooh, that looked up a little bit. So that's a pitch where I feel like if I start throw that more down the middle, that's that's even more enticing to him. I think mm-hmm. my curveball sweeps a little bit. Ooh, nice play. Side spin ball. <laughs> so as we get another look at this catch by Drew Waters, we saw uh, Pache misplay one in center that normally he gets to that you guys talked about. Now you see Waters make a nice sliding catch. What was it like playing with those two guys in your outfield in Mississippi and then also in Gwinnett? Yeah, it's it's unreal. I mean, last year was the first year playing with Drew for us, but uh, we played with Pache for three years now. And I mean, he's just made so many amazing catches and makes him look so easy out there. And then, you know, obviously Drew has, has great range and um, you don't hate what either of those guys do with the bat in their hands. So uh, they're, they're both special players. Drew Waters is the best center fielder in any organization but ours. So, uh, he's, they're both awesome. They cover so much ground out there, and they're both they both can hit. So that's a it's a lot of fun to watch them lead off and hit two hole, and then go play center and right field or center and left. It's fun to watch them do their do their thing out there. Yeah, they platooned pretty much when they came up. You know, they switch off between center and right because they both can't play center, but both of them are center fielders. And uh, so to be able to have two center fielders in your outfield cover some ground, uh, that's always, always nice uh, to have as a pitcher. It definitely gives you confidence. Yes, especially when they hit the balls hard in the gap. And, you know, they're both running after them, and there's a possibility they're going to catch it. Yeah, and then they make that catch for you. It can really help your confidence and get you on a roll. Mm-hmm. So here's Clint Frazier once again. Seems like we've seen a ton of his at-bats today. Um, he's up with a man at first and two outs with a one nothing lead for Scranton. Yeah, I remember just like Tucker, I threw against these guys back-to-back starts. Um, and he had a tough time with the changeup right on right. I don't know if it was a pitch that he hasn't seen much from other righties um, or what, but... Yeah, 
There it is. There it is again. Mm-hmm. Took a big old hack. This one right over the top of it. I mean, if he happened to catch one, I'm sure it would go 400 plus feet, but if I left it up or something. Just don't leave it up. I know. <laughs> Uh, it'd be a tough pitch going in on his hands like that. To, to yeah, keep yeah, no, that's true. It'd, it'd be tough to keep fair. Absolutely. Right, let's get him right here. I do remember this day too. It was the weather was really nice? Yeah, it was a great it was a, day. It was yeah. a nice, uh, nice day up north in the summer. Yeah. Had no complaints. That whole trip was such a such a shock of weather wise. Yeah, yeah we're coming from Mississippi. It was scalding hot, and you guys are coming from uh, Georgia, obviously. So, yeah, and then you go to Rochester, and it rains out one yeah. game, and then exactly go to Scranton, and it's beautiful, and we're just like, wow. All right, I can enjoy this. Then we go back into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to the humidity. So you strike out Clint Frazier to end the inning. And the Stripers will go on to take a 3-1 lead in the top of the fifth on a Ryan Lamar three-run double. And so we will move ahead to the bottom of the fifth. So you've got that lead now. And wouldn't you know it, it's Clint Frazier again leading off the inning. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to see a couple change-ups again. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I would assume. You know, it was good to see Ian get on a roll after that tough first inning. Like we said, you know, the first outing wasn't wasn't uh, an outing that um, he fared too well with. So for him to be able to, to Get through that first inning, find a roll like this, and then obviously we get a lead. Um, you know, it's at this point. Um, I'm sure, Ian, you're you're probably feeling pretty confident, at least feeling a lot better about yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was uh, definitely uh, good to get get going, get on a roll a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mike, I think you mentioned it last half inning um, a little bit about. Um, how some of the pitches have grown for Ian from 2018 when you first saw him uh, to when he arrived in Gwinnett last year. Is there any other differences you saw in him from when you had him with the Fire Frogs to when you had him in Gwinnett? No, not really. I mean, he's he's has good uh, mound uh, presence and good composure. He's always had that, and, and uh, as far as his stuff, he's had a, he's had the good changeup, had the good fastball. Um, you know, it was just really, you know, the, the curveball was was something that we knew that we were putting an emphasis on over the past couple of years, and um, that's that's come a long way. It's been a pitch now he can use uh, quite a bit. He uses all three pitches against lefties and righties, so it's a it's a great combination. Hitters really don't can't eliminate any pitches because he uses them all, and uh, you know he's he's continued to to grow and develop uh, just the same as, as Tuck. And uh, it's it's been good to, to watch. From a pitcher standpoint, Ian, what's it like working with Mike? Um, you know, at two different levels, does uh, the work change at all? Um, given that you're kind of at a different point in your career when you're in advanced A versus Triple A, or is it pretty much the same? Um, I mean, it's changed a little bit. I think when you get to this point, um, yeah, obviously Mike having a, a long major league career can kind of teach you more about that um, where you know when we're in high A he's teaching you you know more about how to pitch and uh, you know what to do in certain spots um, so that was one thing I kind of noticed a little bit but I mean obviously working with him for a year and change has been great and um, I think all the other pitchers would, would say the exact same he's, he's been extremely beneficial to their careers so far 
definitely just like the the difference kind of for high a and uh triple a was kind of more of we're developing your pitches and uh high a kind of like figuring out how to throw the change up or the curveball or the fastball up and then kind of kind of getting to use that and learn the spots when to use it in triple a kind of hey you did this or what if you throw a change up here or what if you started it here just trying to get a little more movement on it just like the little things that can like help your game at the big league level and in triple a good pitch right there he's mad yeah. <laughs> that one was good yeah hey that's tough any hitter standing that's in there that, that or that is gonna have a tough yeah. time that's the only thing i've kind of noticed as i've been elevating a little bit more is i mean that change up off of that which i don't know how many guys would would be comfortable throwing that, but I mean, it, it, the haters usually expecting another. Um, that change of I, I've kind of noticed has, has worked a little bit uh, off of that high fastball in the right situation, obviously. So we're into the bottom of the sixth with uh, Striper still on top three to one. This will be your last inning of work. Uh, for the day. Yeah, I remember finish, finishing off pretty strong. I don't know if I maybe get into a little bit of trouble, but I think I I remember closing it out pretty good. My pitch count's getting up there, so I can't get into too much trouble. So you get past Ryan McBroom that time. That's the guy who had the RBI double off you in the first inning. Uh, so you've got the first out uh, with Gosuke Kato coming up. So as you get later into this outing and you start to close in on the pitch count, does your mentality change? Do you have to be a little bit more economical with each pitch? So you're trying, I, I know you're trying to get through six at least, but what's, what's the, the mindset um, as you kind of close in on the pitch count? Uh, I don't think it changes too much. I mean, I've always found if I, I kind of get myself in trouble when I'm when I know I only have a certain number to go, or even from the get go, if I know I hey, you're only going three innings, I, I kind of get myself in trouble uh, trying to do too much or whatever. So it, it doesn't change too much. Uh, you kind of get towards the end, you just want to bear down and uh, you know finish up strong and, and let the bullpen kind of take over. Mm -hmm. That's in the sixth, seventh inning. You're, you're grinding for it all. You're just trying to finish it out, go on a positive note, and kind of be like, okay, you help the bullpen, or you just whatever you can, just get the most out of you that you can. Good pitch right there. There's a, a curveball in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love seeing yeah. that. Yeah, and I remember this. This is strikeout too, and the curveball in the dirt. Just because I remember the sense of like relief, like almost <laughs> after I after I struck him out, coming off. It's my first time watching it back, and it almost seems like could have avoided some of that trouble if I just kept throwing that curveball earlier, uh, early on, starting to go mm -hmm. back to it here and having some success with it. It's a good way to end it, right there. All in all, though, yeah. No complaints. No complaints there. Good outing, for sure. Yeah, your final line in this one, six innings, three hits, just the one earned run that came in the first inning. Uh, three walks, six strikeouts. You finished with 92 pitches, 62 strikes. Bullpen's able to close it out for you as the Stripers beat Scranton 3-1. to one. So, you know, talking about this outing, you said your parents, your family was in attendance, uh, maybe a little amped up in the first inning. Uh, you said the curveball, was that really the key for you in this outing to kind of bear down and, and get on a roll after the rough start? Yeah, no, I definitely think so. Um, that, that's for me, that's kind of always going to be the key is if I have that going, uh, just like Tucker, I mean, it just, it just plays so well off of our fastballs and, uh, just allows us to do so much more and be, you know, a lot more in control of, uh, the at bat and the hitter. You had so many big starts last year. You threw part of a combined no-hitter for Mississippi. You had that start in the Futures game. Uh, where does this AAA, first AAA win for you, where does that rank for you last year in importance uh, for your season overall? Um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely up there. Um, I just think, like, the importance of just kind of showing me that, that I could do it up there and belonged up there. And, uh, you know, that the, the first outing was 
you know, obviously not what I wanted, but, but you know, I could overcome something like that. And uh, yeah, so definitely, definitely ranked pretty high out of those three. Looking at what you did last year, 2019 season, an eight and seven record with a 3-3 ADRA, uh, 26 starts between Mississippi and Gwinnett. You end up winning the Braves Minor League Pitcher of the Year award. What is your focus now in this 2020 season and the unique season that's uh, that's out in front of us here? But what what do you want to do this season? Yeah, I mean, I said again, I feel like I'm stealing all Tucker's sayings, but. Uh, just hopefully help out as much as I can if, if they feel like uh, that's the route they want to go. And, um, you know, like you said, whether it's an inning or a few innings or starting or whatever, uh, you know, just, just give them everything you can and, uh, you know, help the team win. Mike, we always close things up with you. What do you think Ian needs to do to be ready for the majors? And what do you think his future holds? Uh, he's got a bright future. Both these guys do. Uh, and, and, you know, with this – unprecedented season and the uncertainty that holds uh, you know, with just how short the season is going to be, who knows what it's going to look like. I know both these guys are going to prepare themselves and uh, be ready for any opportunity that comes and uh, they know what uh, they can control. They'll focus on that, but uh, both of them are going to have a, a bright future uh, and be in the big leagues very soon, if not this year. Um, you know, and like I said, they're going to be ready and uh, make the most of the opportunity. Well, that's going to do it for Striper's Distant Replay, Episode 5. Uh, I want to thank my three guests, pitching coach Mike Marath for your Gwinnett Stripers, and pitchers Ian Anderson and Tucker Davidson. It's been great watching uh, your first AAA wins. Uh, obviously hoping for much success for you guys both uh, this season and beyond. Stay safe, and we'll see you on the baseball field here soon. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. Thank you.